Hi, and welcome to Watch It Played's Table Talk. My name is Rodney Smith, and in this series, I share my initial thoughts on a gaming-related topic, and then invite you to respond in the comments below, which I'll compile into the following Table Talkback episode, and that way we can all participate in the conversation. We're also going to get some thoughts from the rest of the Watch It Play crew as well during this video. I have to tell you, I enjoy these Table Talk episodes, and I don't release them regularly, mostly because of time constraints, but also because I really only want to take a deep dive into a topic that I feel inspired by, and that I think I might have something to contribute to. And I have to credit the inspiration to Audible for this one. They were the sponsor of our last Table Talk, but this time when they reached out, they said they were promoting Mental Health Awareness Month, and from that, I immediately got thinking. In what ways does our tabletop hobby positively, and perhaps even negatively, affect our mental health? Now, I want to say up front, I'm by no means an expert in discussions of mental health. I think that the challenges each of us face in these areas are often personal and complex, and at the best of times, difficult to self-assess. And the research that we have in these areas is it's simply not as advanced as our understanding of our physical health, is it? but it's arguably just as important. I think what gives me some confidence to discuss this topic is that I'm going to try to speak strictly from my own personal experience, and I'd extend the same invitation to you. I think there's room in that approach for all of us to really listen and hopefully learn something from each other, or even just feel that sense of, yeah, I, I relate to what's being said here, or no, actually, that affects me completely differently, and, and here's why. So I want to start by sharing an aspect of the hobby that I know has contributed positively to my personal mental health. And it might seem a little strange at first, but I think if you know me, this might not come as a big surprise, but one of the things that I really appreciate is that board games provide structure. When I sit down to play a game, assuming the rules have been taught well by somebody, and that is an assumption, but let's, let's go with it, then everyone at the table is agreeing to engage in a shared activity by following the same set of rules. I find there's so many activities in life that lack this kind of clarity, whether it's relationships, workplaces, or just broadly what we would call being a part of society. Doesn't it feel overwhelming at times simply because the rules aren't consistently applied or even really understood? That's a difficult state to live in, and we all live in it. So when I sit down to play a game, I find great relief in knowing in this activity whether it's a game I've played a hundred times before or one that's brand new to me, for the next hour or so, we're all agreeing, willingly, for the sake of each other's enjoyment, to abide by the same set of rules and apply them equally. Does that make sense? I hope I'm explaining this well. I hope, I hope it connects with, with some of you. Th there's something in that structure and collaborative play, even though we're competing, that to me is, is, is a bit of a respite from what otherwise can feel very murky about day-to-day -day living. Well, I'm not alone. Uh, Monique has a few thoughts to share as well on how the hobby has benefited her well-being. The board gaming hobby has helped me quite a bit in terms of preserving or often improving my mental health. I'm a content creator now, so there are times when it is less so, but in the past I've struggled a bit with bouts of anxiety, especially while working in healthcare at the height of the pandemic, and board gaming provided a much needed release from reality. Just being able to immerse myself in a different world for a few hours while still exercising my brain really helps with the anxiety. In board gaming, you can pretty much choose any theme that you're interested in escaping to, and there's probably a board game about it. You can go manage a zoo, or you can make wine, go to space, or you can even garden. And during times when being social is not what I need mentally, there are also solo games that I've enjoyed. So I'd say that even though I am working as a content creator now, and at times it can be quite difficult, I still turn to board games during times of stress and anxiety, and it helps a lot. You know, Monique highlighted not only the ways in which board games allow us to get a break from stressful situations, but because there's so much diversity in board game styles, settings, and even in their complexity, that you can tailor your escape to be exactly the kind of break you need. I mean, maybe you need to go feel heroic and beat the snot out of some plastic monsters for an hour, or just peacefully plant a cardboard garden. There's going to be a game for the type of break you need. Or maybe a book. Thanks to our sponsor, Audible is also a great place to escape to, with hundreds of thousands of titles across every genre, including books on understanding your own mental health. My wife and I have been listening to Atlas of the Heart, which details 87 different human emotions. 
Most of us will lump our feelings into four or five categories, like happy, sad, angry, extra angry, and that makes it hard to express what we're truly experiencing. This audiobook has given us language for those other feelings, which has been really helpful. But no matter your area of interest, new members can try Audible free for 30 days, choosing one title each month to keep from the entire catalog, which includes the latest bestsellers and new releases. And you keep those forever, even if you cancel later. And one of the best things, the Audible app makes it easy to listen anytime, anywhere. So when you need that break to recenter yourself in a stressful situation, or just need a new perspective, your Audible selections are right there with you. So pick up your title for free by visiting audible.com slash watch it or text watch it to 500, 500 to try Audible for free for 30 days. You'll also find those links and further details in the description of this video to help you decide if Audible would be a good fit for you. Speaking of being a good fit, I wanna mention a quality of the board gaming hobby that has been significant to my well-being and overall mental health. It has given me so many opportunities to socialize and connect with people and to feel like I fit in. Now, we're all gonna have different needs in this area, but I tend to be a social person. And when we moved over 10 years ago, I didn't know anybody in our new area. And that was isolating. And the people I met, they tended to be into hockey and fishing and other areas of interest that just weren't my interests. I know it's strange, a Canadian who's not into hockey, but I was more of a basketball person. Certainly though, through the hobby and this channel, I met and forged the strongest relationships I've ever had in my life. And there is a direct line between this hobby and those friendships. Without this shared interest, those other relationships wouldn't even have had a chance to get started. Not only that, but gaming as an activity is something that's very, it's intimate, it's not passive. You're actively interacting with people and you learn so much so quickly about other people in that environment that I think it can really help accelerate friendships. But that's me, for others, even the idea of getting together in a larger social setting can actually create anxiety. I'll be honest with you, as much as I love the experiences and memories that come from playing games, sometimes it can be work. Getting up the gumption to engage with others in social situations like an evening out, a party, or even a game night can be intimidating and emotionally exhausting. Sometimes it's tempting to just slip away to the sidelines and be a wallflower, even when I'd like to be participating. And what I've found is that on those days that I'm not feeling socially ambitious, board, card, and tabletop games can help to empower me to participate with groups of friends, acquaintances, and even strangers. Games help me cross that mental barrier because they provide a structured environment and some guidance to the interaction. Here's what we're doing, and here's how it works. All right. I, I found that this often affords me time to kind of warm up to the situation and, and slowly emerge from my shell as, as the game progresses and I become more comfortable. As a result, gaming's given me opportunities to participate in gatherings that I otherwise would have avoided due to anxiety, which has been great for my mental health. So far, we've been focused on sharing positive examples of the hobby's impact on a person's mental health. But I can say personally, there are some negatives too. Games are often focused on a competition of some kind. And at the end, there will be winners and losers. And I would tell you, I don't mind losing games. And it's true, I've lost plenty, and I haven't left the hobby yet. But if I get in a streak of losses, I do find it can be demoralizing. Losing over and over and over again can lead to a kind of, sometimes an internal dialogue will start in my head. Thoughts like, am I any good at this? Like why can other people see the right moves to make that I can't? Uh, or like just, what's wrong with me? And that kind of unchecked thought process can be unhealthy. And I think if a person is prone to negative self-talk or negative self-analysis, then gaming could act to reinforce those ideas. Sometimes when I'm playing games, my wife will take longer with her turn because she assumes everyone else is just better at games than she is. And she worries that others might think that she's made a bad or even dumb move. So she'll overthink what to do in an effort to not make a fool of herself. And it doesn't matter that she's wicked smart and professionally accomplished, that still happens. And that's one of the challenges, isn't it? Because even though no one else at the table is making those judgments towards her, it's still something a person might have trouble shaking. 
And feelings like that can be even harder to manage based on a person's overall mental well-being in the moment, which Paula has some thoughts on. So something that I've realized for me is that board games can be a great barometer for the state of my mental health. Emotional self-awareness doesn't always come easy, but I've been able to start to notice that sometimes when I'm playing a game, I have a lot less chill than normal. Typically, I am able to let losses just roll off my back, but there are some times when they really bug me or I find myself getting upset at another player for something they did on their turn when normally I wouldn't care. And I've learned that that's a sign that something else is going on with me that day with my mental health. And I can use that moment to investigate why I'm having this kind of reaction, right? And then I'm able to identify, oh, I'm stressed out today, or oh, I'm overwhelmed by something that is unrelated to this game. And that awareness can help me have healthier coping mechanisms or just better communication with the people I'm interacting with in the game or you know, outside of the game and other parts of my life once the game is over. You know, once I've apologized to the people in the game for being a sore loser. I think that dovetails nicely into another positive about the hobby. Games are, at the end of the day, a low stakes activity, unless maybe you're in a tournament. But as Paula says, playing games can be used to help you measure your mental health in the moment. Gaming's meant to be a fun activity, right? So if you're not having fun, now there's a variety of factors it could be, but it might be a good indicator to check in on yourself and see if there's something else you need to identify that's causing additional frustration or stress internally. You know something else that causes me stress? And hear me out, because it relieves a lot of stress too, but technology. I couldn't do anything I do without technology, so I love it, I appreciate it, but sometimes I'm just sick of it, and I want anything that feels the opposite of that. And that many times for me is board gaming. Sometimes I just don't want another TV show or another movie to watch or a video game to play. I don't want to doom scroll. I want, I want pieces to move around. I want cards to hold. I want, I want another person to interact with and talk to and not through a screen, but have them right here. I want something that as an activity is just more present. And when I get to play a board game, that can be just a rejuvenating thing and the right change of pace before I head back to the inevitable technology. And you know, technology can be very isolating. It's, it's harder to get a real sense of how someone is doing through digital interactions where we have to rely on a few short texts or emojis. You can't always tell when what someone really needs is a friend. For me, I always feel that board games can be a great excuse to reach out to someone. In the past, board games have been fantastic for helping me escape the cycle of my own thoughts. And one of the most important things we can do when someone is struggling, or you think they might be, is reaching out to them, is saying, hey, do you want to play a board game? And sit with them and hang out with them. I personally have really been helped by people doing that for me. Reaching out to someone when they are in pain or struggling is really important. With the added benefit that it just helps stop the cycle of thought just for a moment. If there's someone out there that you feel could do with it, reach out to them and say, do you wanna play a game? I think it's worth a try because it's, it's a lot better to have an awkward hour to with someone trying to play a board game than to never have the chance to play with them again. And that right there is one of the big challenges with mental wellness, isn't it? With physical wellness, when someone's struggling, not always, but often we'll be able to see some signs of it and know to like step in and try to help. But when someone is struggling with something inside of themselves, something related to their mental health, if they're stuck in a negative headspace or just feeling hopeless, they might still be able to put on a smile and appear to be fine, but we don't know what's going on in their mind. And it might take, just as Matthew said, something as simple as inviting someone to play a game to help them break out of a negative thought cycle or just to allow them to let their guard down long enough to be able to share exactly what they're going through. As we wrap up, I just wanna say I'm really thankful for this topic because I often don't think of things through the lens of 
what is this doing for my mental health? You know, when it comes to all of this, I probably oversimplify and just think, well, you know, games are fun, it's, it's a hobby. But if you break down all its different aspects, there are so many ways board gaming impacts us on a deeper, more meaningful level, both positively and potentially in ways that can be difficult. And with that in mind, if you're comfortable doing it, please share your own experience of the hobby as a part of your mental wellness, positive or negative. And in the upcoming Table Talk Back episode, I'll compile those comments and dive into this topic with you based on your insights. Now, I should mention, I have some travel and we have a couple of events coming up to plan for. So if the follow-up video is delayed, just know that it's coming. But in the meantime, remember, what you write may very well resonate with another viewer reading the comments. And sometimes just knowing that others are experiencing something similar to what you're going through can be enough to lift someone's spirits and have a positive impact. And with that in mind, until next time, thanks for watching.